What's going on everybody? It is your boy Tim back with another video. I was just out getting my exercise in this morning here on a little nature trail in Montana and I remembered that everyone's been asking me to bring the walk and talks back. So I pulled the camera out of the backpack, slapped it on the selfie stick. We're going to walk, we're going to talk, we're going to have a good time and today we're going to be talking about the American dream or more specifically how I had to like let go of the American dream to really start living my life. Now, I wanna say real quick, I say American dream because I'm from America, okay? Feel free to insert whatever country or region of the world you want to. Wherever you're at, put that in there. But basically what we're talking about is whatever is like the prevailing ideal of how you should live your life in your area, okay? I know the American dream involves like, you know, getting good grades and then going to college or university so that you can get a good job and a great career. So you're going to have, you know, a two-story house in the suburbs with a big backyard with a golden retriever in it and 3.5 kids and a Mercedes and or a BMW. Okay. This is the American dream. And there's nothing wrong with this dream. If that is your dream, cool, go for it. But the thing I've come to realize in life, and it took me a while, it took me well into my thirties to realize is that the American dream is not for all of us. And I realized that the American dream was not for me. And in fact, like living my life a lot of times unconsciously or subconsciously, living my life in a way trying to like get the American dream or acquire the American dream was like taking away from my happiness. And honestly, like I, I realized this in hindsight. Uh, at the time, I was probably 33, 34, somewhere in there. I just realized that something was off. Okay. I found myself coming home from work and like sitting on the computer, watching a lot of videos about minimalism and simple living and things like that. And I, I just realized like something was off. I just realized like I, I wasn't happy. I was cool. My life was good. You know, uh, uh, you know, I, I cannot complain about my life at the time, but I just wasn't happy. And I realized over time, especially when I got deeper into like simple living and things like that, and I realized that, you know, life wasn't all about possessions. It wasn't about, you know, acquiring things. It wasn't about getting more money. Life is really about just like living with what you need, maybe a little more and like enjoying yourself, being happy. And so I had to figure out like what was going to make me happy in this life. And as, as easy as that sounds, as simple as that sounds, that's a big step that I think a lot of us never get to. Okay. We just spend our life. I think most of us going after these dreams, you know, I was spending most of my life up into my thirties going after like the American dream, because that's, that's just what everyone told me to do. <laughs> you know, that's just what everyone said, do. Okay. And as, as humans, we're, you know, we're societal creatures. Um, we're social creatures, I should say. You know, we, we like being around other people and we take cues from other people. So if your whole life, everybody's saying, do this, you're going to do it. Even if you throw in some little variations here and there, you're going to do what everyone says do, to do. But if it's not making you happy, like it wasn't for me, you have to stop and like ask yourself, what do I want to do? What will make me happy? And the thing is, if you ask yourself this, um, and you put in the time and you take the, you do the self analysis. Okay. Um, and you can get to a point where you can let go of what everybody else is doing. Cause that's part of it too. You know, if you can ask yourself, what do I want to do? What will make me happy? And then you can deal with the ridicule and, you know, maybe the people talking about you when you go after that stuff, then you can't get happy. But a lot of times people will get to the first step and they'll identify, oh, okay, I, I would much rather be doing this. But when they start down that path, they can't take the ridicule. They can't deal with the ridicule. People start picking on them. People start talking about them. They can't deal with that. So they go back to chasing, you know, this arbitrary dream that isn't making them happy. It's amazing that we will give up happiness in life a lot of times just so we don't have to hear nobody talk about us. That's, that's, <laughs> that, that's how sensitive we are. That's how sensitive we are in this day and age. We can identify that we really want to be doing this over here. I'm going this way just so I can try to get these, those horses back there in the shot. You know, out here, you know, out here, Montana got horses out here. Um, anyway, yes, we will identify that over there might make me happy, but we'll go do this over here because if we go do that, people talk about us. 
But if you can sit down and do the work and realize what will make me happy and then actually go, go after that, you can get happy. If the American dream or whatever dream your parents and your guidance counselor and your professors are trying to sell, sell you on isn't working for you, find one that will. You know, sometimes you have to let go of the American dream to go after your dream. And I feel so blessed that like I was able to identify this. You know, I don't know. I don't know what, what shifted. You know, I think I just got to the point where like I was just so like, I'm like, if I have to live this life, I'm going to live it doing things I want to do. If I have to be here instead of, you know, some people go the opposite direction and they're just like over life. This life sucks. It's all suffering. I'm unhappy. I'm done with life. I feel blessed that I was like, no, I think this life thing is awesome. I think this life thing is pretty cool. I just have to figure out how to get out of it. Like what I want out of it. I want joy. I want happiness. I want laughs. I want to have a good time. How can I do that? Because for a while, you know, uh, I wanted to, I wanted a BMW, you know, I, I wanted a condo downtown, you know, things like that. That, that was my next level for a while. But you know, the more I kind of went after those things, the more I failed to get them for whatever reasons and the more like unhappy I got. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just not, I'm not doing this. Like I, I, I want to live. I'm not d depressed anymore. Not suicidal anymore. I want to live, but like I got to be happy, you know? And one of the things for me, and it's different for everyone. One of the things for me was like, I identified that like, I wanted to travel. I wanted to see some stuff. You know, Florida is a cool state. I've lived there most of my life, but I was ready to see some other stuff. You know, not to mention Florida is a crazy state. I was ready to go to some states and see some stuff, you know, that aren't so crazy. You know, I was just, I just wanted to explore. I wanted to see more. And I was like, I think that will make me happy. I think that will make me happier than having a condo in downtown Gainesville, Florida and, you know, a, a nice job. Okay. And a BMW that I really can't afford. That's another thing too. A lot of times in chasing the American dream or chasing societal standards, we can't really afford it because you'll notice all the dreams involved. Typically you going into massive amounts of debt. Think about it. Every dream, like every like dream society sells you typically involves you going into massive amounts of debt because that's why they came up with the dream. Because if you analyze it and you take it back, you know, people, the people at the top of the pyramid come up with the dream for all of us under them on the pyramid. And while we're chasing this dream, we end up enriching them at the top. Think about it. All this stuff in the American dream or whatever dream people want you to chase typically involves you paying money out to other people. Think about it. I said, I don't want to do that. If I'm going to pay out some money, it's going to be for things I want, like plane tickets or hotels, you know, in Thailand. You know what I mean? Like I was like, if, if I have to pay out money, it's not going to be for these arbitrary possessions that you said I need to have in order to be like successful. I'm air quoting successful because success is relative. But a lot of times we just pick up the ideal of success that everybody else around us picks up. I'm done with that. I let go of the American dream. I let go of the ideals of success that other people have. And I was like, I want to start doing what I want to do. Like this life ends, right? This life ends. And I was like, you know, for the rest of my life, I want to spend it doing things I want to do. And I don't care if people pickle me. I don't care if people laugh at me. I don't care if people don't understand it. Like, I feel like it's going to make me happy. Because when I was saying this, I hadn't started doing all this stuff. I didn't know 100%, but I just, I just had the idea. And I think all of us do. That's part of it too. All of us somewhere know the things we want to do that would make us happy. We might be afraid to do them. We might be scared to do them, but we know. And I just knew, I was like, I want to travel. I want to see other things. So for me, um, anyone who follows the channel knows this story. Started doing seasonal work, working at different national parks around the country, which is amazing. It's beautiful. Um, you know, I went to these places. They paid me to work there. They gave me room and board. Um, Yellowstone Glacier worked right outside Rocky Mountain National Park. I saw so many things I'd never seen before. I met people from all over the country, all over the world. Just amazing. Just amazing. I went from mowing grass and coming home to my empty one bedroom apartment in Gainesville, Florida to like, you know, the first seasonal job I took was in Yellowstone right out at the Old Faithful Inn. You know, that's a world famous landmark. I, I went from being 
in the middle of like being nowhere just and, and no one really like knowing I existed I felt like sometimes to being like working at a worldwide a worldwide recognized like a uh, uh, landmark tourist attraction people from all over the world showing up every day like I was in the mix you know I got, I got new friends like it just boom like it just for one day I was living this other life two weeks later I was living this other life and loving it and I knew it was the best decision ever and I was like you know what for so long I've been trying to live life the way everyone else said I should be living it wasn't making me happy as soon as I decided like I'm gonna start living on my own terms and I put in the work to do it I do want to mention too, like I had to do a lot of uncomfortable things. Okay. I had to let my apartment go. I had to let my apartment go. I sold my car. I had a little, I sold my car, got a little scooter, eventually sold that scooter. Um, you know, quit the job, you know, Uncom very uncomfortable because I was doing all this to go and work in a national park halfway across the country for a company I'd never heard of. The, the interview was over the phone. I never met in these people. Like it was uncomfortable. And that's the thing too. Sometimes it will be very uncomfortable to chase after your dreams. Letting go of the American dream or letting go of the dream that everyone else around you tells you is, is, is the right way to do it. And that's how you get security. It'll be scary. It will be uncomfortable. You will question yourself many, many times. Many times. I was like, Tim, what are you doing? You know, now fortunately I had some people in my life that even though they didn't understand what I was doing, they didn't try to talk me out of it. Some of you will have people who try to talk you out of it. But you just have to realize your dreams aren't their dreams. We're all unique individuals with free will. So like why would the universe, God, whatever, create us all with free will and all with unique like things we enjoy if it didn't want us to like do those things? If we were meant to be put on this planet, on this earth, and all do the same thing, then why even have free will? Why not just program it into us? Why not just pre-program the American dream into us? But no, we are put here and we have these desires and these urges to do other things because that's what, in my opinion, the universe, the source, the creator wants us to do. I mean, look at, look at it this way. Imagine you have three kids. Do you want all three of your kids to be the exact same kid and they all do the same thing and they all like the same things? No, you like that like the one kid is the weird nerdy one and the other kid is the, is the athlete and the other kid is just totally lazy and does nothing. You like that. You like that. It adds spice and variety to being a parent, I would imagine. The same is true, I think, with the source, the creator of the universe. It wants us all to like be different and take advantage of those different desires and urges and likes that is put in us. But if we're all out here just like chasing after one thing, that's boring. And not to mention, it won't make us happy. I think the ultimate, your ultimate happiness comes when you're being the most genuinely you. And the genuine you has dreams and has goals. I know you do. You're thinking about them right now. The genuine you has goals and dreams and things that, you know, that it wants to do. That you want to do. But you have to let go. Like really let go. You have to realize like hey. There's this other thing out here. This other dream out here. That everybody else believes is the way to happiness. For some people it is. But obviously it's not for me. Let me try my dreams out. Let me try my dreams out. Here's the thing. You can always go back to the American dream. You can always go back and live the life your parents want you to live. You can always do that. You can always go back and live the life that other people, society are telling you to live. But why not for once in our lives, why don't we just take the time, let that go for a while, and go after the things we want to do? I don't care how crazy they sound. What's wrong with, there's a ton of people living life like crazy people out here. Uh, you, this one thing about crazy people, you ever notice how happy they are? When I say crazy, I do, I'm not talking about people with mental illness, but like the people that we call eccentric are, are crazy. You ever notice how happy they seem? You ever notice how happy that one crazy lady who marches by the beat of her own drum at the end of the cul-de-sac? You ever notice how happy she seems? <laughs> That's the thing about people society deems crazy. They're super happy. They're super happy. And when you are living a life that makes you happy, the noise from other people telling you you're living wrong or picking on you or ridiculing you gets very quiet. Okay, somebody asked me the other day, they were like, Tim, do you feel like you're behind in life? 
and uh, during a live stream. It's like, Tim, do you feel like you're behind in life? And like it hit me because it was one of those, I never thought about it. Not something I ever think about. So it kind of hit me. But then also I was like, that's a great question. You know, that is a great question. Um, the fact that it doesn't hit me or I don't think about it just shows like how how little now I feed into other people's opinions. Because there was a time I would have been like, oh man, I'm 41, about to be 42 in like three months. Um, you know, don't have all this other stuff. You know, I <laughs> don't have a house, don't have a career. Um, you know, never been married, no kids. You know, there was a time I would have been like, what's wrong with me? Why don't I have all these things? But now that I'm living, you know, a life that like I want to live, okay? And I'm, I'm traveling and I'm not spending my life, you know, uh, at a nine to five all the time. And I'm just kind of, you know, living on my own terms and, and, and trying to find ways to, to support myself uh, on my own terms. Now that I'm doing that and, I, and it makes me so happy, now that I'm, and I'm out here trying to motivate people, things like that. Now that I'm doing that, I'm so happy that I don't even think about the other lifestyle. I don't think about the American dream. I don't, I don't, you know, compare myself with the American dream. It's not even on my barometer anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even think about it. That's other people if they want to do that, cool. But for me, the metrics like I measure myself on are metrics that involve my way of life. Am I pushing the envelope? Am I leveling up? Where am I going to travel to next? Like, how can I motivate people more? Things like that are what I care about. I, I just don't, I don't hear, you know, every now and then someone will, you know, hop on this channel or I might meet someone in real life and they have something to say. Uh, I just kind of look at how happy they are. You know, not to judge, not, it's not a competition, but my thing is like, if you're not as happy as me, I, I'm probably not going <laughs> to I'm probably not going to listen to your advice. Like, if you're just parroting back what society has told you is how you should live your life, I'm probably not going to listen. I mean, I'll listen, but I'm probably not going to take it in. Because once you start going after your dream, even if you haven't, like, got to, the, got to that dream yet, you just get happy in, like, the doing. The journey makes you happy. When you're going after something you really want to do in life, the journey makes you happy and brings you joy. That is one thing that when I was chasing the American dream did not happen. I was not happy chasing the American dream. The journey was draining. The journey was exhausting because it was decades, it felt like, uh, and I wasn't getting there. I wasn't getting any closer. But it's crazy. Now that I'm doing the things I want to do in life, the journey makes me happy. Even little baby steps make me happy. Any little thing in line with putting me closer to my dreams or you know a lot of the dreams i've already kind of accomplished and then i just set new ones like it's just so much joy so much happiness i really feel like i'm alive like every day is an adventure like every day you know i'm smiling i'm excited and like this didn't happen before before it always seemed negative and i wasn't where i needed to be and i was always trying to like get something now i'm just doing now i'm just existing if that makes any sense now i'm just this is my life and I'm living it. I'm trying to enjoy it to the fullest. I'm doing things that make me happy. I'm not out here trying to acquire. You know, there, you know, there are things I want to do and I do try to level up, but it's different now. It's different now. Before, it just seemed like I, it, was, it was every single day, you need to have more. You need to have a better job. You need this. Now it's not needs. It's just like, there's some things I want. <laughs> but I really, you know, in hindsight, I look back. And I'm so happy that I was able to just like let go of the American dream, let go of what society says I needed to be doing and just like start living Tim's dream. It's OK to be selfish sometimes. Start living your dream. And I promise you, you will be happier. Life will get so much better. You will be living a life that like you can live in the moment. You can live day to day. There'll be so much joy, so much happiness. And it just. You'll just love being alive. <laughs> this is, I, I, I can't even really put into words the amount of happiness you get when you start chasing after your dreams and stop going after society's dreams. Anyway, I'm Tim. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to y'all later.